Italy stands poised to invade Ethiopia under the leadership of Benito Mussolini. In a speech to thousands of supporters last week, Mussolini recalled the glory of Roman Empire's past, calling on his supporters to join with him to reclaim lands rightfully belonging to them. Facing Mussolini's highly mobilized war machine is Haile Selassie of Ethiopia, who must rely on high-spirited but poorly armed tribal forces to defend his monarchy. In a concerted effort to rid Germany of what he views as degenerate influences, Chancellor Adolf Hitler last week opened an exhibition of condemned art. A dabbler in oils and watercolors himself, Chancellor Hitler said in a statement that he is not anti-art but anti-decadence and despises art that portrays Germany in a negative and unsympathetic fashion. Here at home, American spirits continue to rebound from economic hard times with jobs made possible by Washington, D.C. Fear is vanishing and confidence is growing on every side. With the press of a button, President Roosevelt puts into operation the Tennessee Valley Dam, a monumental accomplishment that provides flood control and electricity to the southern states. Another stunning achievement made possible by the millions of unemployed men and women put back to work by the Works Progress Administration. Things are looking up indeed for Americans as we look to the future with hope and high vision. Fashion designers for years have competed for the attention and discerning eye of the female consumer. Everything from bathing suits to evening gowns have painstakingly been designed for the female form. But what about Junior? Hey, Jim, Children's fashion you? was the star in Miami, Florida this week. Everything from underwear to evening wear graced the tiny runways as discerning children took notice of the threads coming their way. Better not ask this little guy to wear a tie. Mommy! If dog is man's best friend, then perhaps the cat is this lady's chum. A very large cat indeed. The magnificent Wanda and her lion kitty helped initiate the Federal Theater's Circus Project last week, the latest in a series of low-cost entertainments produced by the Maverick WPA program. Hey! Vaudeville, Shakespeare, and Lion Tamers, brought to you by Uncle Sam, courtesy of the... For a nickel, mister. What? I'll sing you a song for a nickel. No, thank you.
So, it was the most exciting thing in my life. Negroes, dear? Yes, Negroes. All Negroes? All Negroes, dear. It was a minstrel show? No, Macbeth. I said it before, Macbeth. Shakespeare. With Negroes? Yes. Carlo says it's unlucky to say Macbeth in the theatre. Mm. So what do they call it? What is it, Carlo? The Scottish play. Yes, the Scottish play, but there isn't really anything Scottish in this production. Uh, <laughs> I don't know a lot of Negro Scots. Oh, great, dear. You don't know a lot of Negro anything. <laughs> <laughs> Madame? Oh, dear. I know. I had a call last night. Not you, thank God. What the? Steel strike. Labour riots. No. No. Oh, the reception for the Italian exhibit is today at noon. Italian exhibit at noon. Mm -hmm. Please don't be late. Carlo and I are going to see a theatrical producer today. Mm, a theatrical producer? To learn about the artistic process. Artistic process? Yes. What time is the exhibit? Noon. Yeah. I'll be there, darling. In a couple of days. Sure. Antonio, you like that? Yeah. A I N C I N O. What? Excuse me, Miss. Is this line for to uh, get a job? I think so. I am carpenter. I work with my hands. This good government wants to build. Yeah. I build with wood. Yeah. What do you do? I think this might be the wrong line. This line is for theatre. It's for actors and musicians, I believe. You are an actress? Yeah. Is this the right line for the Federal Theatre Project? I think this is the line for everything. Well, are there other lines? There's other lines inside. Well, are there lines for theatre jobs inside? I believe so. I work anywhere. I dig ditches, pour slag, act. Flanagan? Does not matter. Mrs. Flanagan! Mrs. Flanagan! Mrs. Flanagan! Uh, aren't you Holly Flanagan? Yes, Mr... Uh, Beaver. I'm a Beaver. Beaver? Mr. Beaver, what can I do for you? Uh, well, I'm completely embarrassed, uh, but I heard you'd be here today, and I'm a playwright, and I've written a children's play. It's called Revolt of the Beavers, and I want to know if you'd read it. Absolutely. You have to fill out submission forms. Oh, I did. They're all inside. It's got great music. I'd be happy to play it for you. I I'll be back. Okay, uh, we want to do what you do. I say, fine, take 30 years, <laughs> do nothing else, and then maybe. I'm not a teacher. I'm an entertainer. What's the problem? Mr. Crickshaw works at the Vaudeville Project, and he's complaining about the policy there. I'm supposed to tutor two no talents. It's impossible. Mr. Crickshaw, we were hoping that you would introduce young people to Vaudeville and encourage them to take it up and prolong its life. Prolong its life? Vaudeville will be around long after you and your communists are. Hallie, you have a meeting. Two Chinese gentlemen in native dress came by last night. Want you to start a Chinese theater. Very polite, they'll come again. Also, you got a call yesterday saying that we can't hire an elephant for the Brooklyn Circus. Why not? They're not eligible for relief. How? Welcome home. How was your trip? Great. I have wonderful things to report. Did you hear about the elephant? Not eligible for relief. Also, there's a guy in a squirrel outfit that's hanging around trying to see you. Beaver. What? He's a beaver. A playwright. Oh, a playwright. Also, there's trouble in Minnesota. Seems an ex-fan dancer auditioned for the Federal Theater there. Fan dancer? Girl ass takes her clothes off, you know. Anyway, so she auditions. She doesn't get the job, but the papers run a photo of her saying the Federal Theater is now employing strippers. Oh, Pierre! Hello, darling. I trust you're not too tired on tour in the USA. Oh, Pierre, I have seen such great theaters. So inspiring. Have you heard the rumors? About the stripper? Stripper, no. People from Washington snooping around our files. All this talk about congressman dies. Dies isn't death. Something about a subcommittee? No, it's news to me. Hello, everybody. Go stand on someone's neck while you're taken. Cut into somebody's throat as you put. For every dream and schemes dependent on weather. All through the storm, you've kept it warm. The nickel under your foot. Who's singing? A prostitute. She's starving. She sells herself for food. She thinks she feels a nickel under her foot, but when she reaches for it, there's nothing there. She's that hungry. You hate that, don't you? I didn't say that. I didn't say anything. I, I'm not here. You haven't slept in two days. Go to sleep.
to cultivate a relationship with yourself, Mr. Wells and Carlo. What's the name of your opera, dear? Le Coronier de Despair. Le Coble in Despair. He oh. sings passages from it to me all the time. Oh, yes. He can't seem to get it out of his head. Oh, Poor yes. Carlo is such a his sad man. His pleasures must be sourced with pain. Oh, oh worthy Faustus. Oh. He thinks your looks are changed. Gentlemen. What else, Faustus? Look, sirs, come see not. Come see not. Yet, Faustus, look up to heaven. Hey, cue lightning. Cue oh, lightning. damn it. Lightning. That's late. If the cue is later, we'll get a laugh. We do not need this laugh. It's a stupid, embarrassing laugh. Concentrate, folks. Now do it again. Yet, Faustus, look up to heaven. Which one is Mr. Oh, Wells? It's the um, ranting madman with the blue boy wig. I gave up my soul for my cunning. <laughs> That's my cue. Not your line. What's my line? It's not your line. It's Bert's line. Bert, no, say it. Bert. Say, stay the line. Oh, God forbid. Oh, God, God forbid. Break time. Break time. Union break. I 15 minutes. The gate is expired. The hell with the seat. The hell with you. I got to go have a coffee and a fuck. Never mind. For the first time in this goddamn rehearsal process, we're in the middle of a discovery essential to make it a play work. I need a smoke. You know, actors? You smokers, you wouldn't know the church or the theater if it smacked you in the mouth. Shut up, Orson, or I'll smack you in the Fuck mouth. Fuck you, John. You're not a believer. You're a worker. You're right, and you're not a director, Orson. You're a dictator. You're atheists. You have no respect for the theater. This isn't a game. This isn't a goddamn cocktail party. This is work. Nah. It's hard work, and if you're not willing to give your blood to it, then it isn't worth it, because you'll never make theater with your coffee clutch union breaks. You will make pageants without truth, without soul, bloodless, sweatless, shallow, lily-white pageants signifying nothing. I'm going, Jack. You can give him a two-hour-long smoke. We'll pick up with the seven deadly sins. Right. He has his moments. He's supposed to melt it. Oh, it's so fascinating. I've always wanted to observe the process of art making. So what happens now? Now we wait for the prima donna to return. Sandra! Baby! Sandra. Baby. Where have you been? Oh, good grief. Excuse me, Mr. Houseman. But I, I, hmm? have to, I have to go to the hospital. The hospital? Why? Are you hurt? No, 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 no. Hello. I, 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 my wife just had a child. Oh, congratulations. Oh, thank you. Oh. Oh. Countess, may I introduce a supporting mm -hmm. member of our cast, oh, Aldo Savano, who plays the thank role you. of the... Um, um, the fourth of... scholar. Fourth Wonderful. scholar, yes. Mm. This ain't no political meeting house. It's a damn theater. We're not doing nothing here but entertaining, making people laugh. Well, I'm making people laugh. Get me up. Mrs. Flanagan wants me to teach those reds how to make people laugh. Forget it. You? Nothing funny about communists. There's nothing funny about you. Reds are glum, serious people. What about that stinky Magoo? He was funny. He wasn't a communist. Oh, most certainly was. The threat is a rooster's crown. Melvin, you don't know what you're talking about. Stinky Magoo was a Republican. He was red, Tommy. No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. No, he wasn't. You would know. He was not a red. Stinky Magoo was a Republican. He was funny. Well, he was funny. You're right about that. God rest his soul. May he make God laugh. Here, here. Mr. Crickshaw, hi, Lo. Uh, we are ready for our tutorial. We're ready for our tutorial. We're ready to learn how to be funny. And how to do the mouth thing. <laughs> <laughs> it is fantastic, this art form that embraces the future, shatters convention, and uses color to create an exquisite sensuality, huh? It looks all cut up. Shapes distributed geometrically. Exactly. What does it mean? It means whatever you want it to mean. The future <laughs> they exist in the realm of emotion. Mm. The eros, not the intellect. Ah, yes, eros. I particularly like the sensuality of the mm. colors. Mm. Now, this one has interesting colors, too. Well, you have a very good eye, Mr. Mathers. Gray. Gray? My name, not the color. Oh. <laughs> is that a Medigliani? Yes, it is. Nelson Rockefeller? 
me Margarita Sarfati, cultural emissary to Premier Mussolini. Piacere. Enchanté. Delighted to see you, Nelson. Mr. Mathers, Mr. Hurst, always a pleasure. Good to see you, Mary. Premier Mussolini is very thankful to you and your family for your generous contribution to the museum. I understand that you are personally responsible for bringing the exhibition here. Well, my motives are purely selfish, madam. I've never been lucky enough in my life to stand inches away from a da Vinci or a Michelangelo. Ah, how does it feel? <sighs> Extraordinary. Nelson can be very helpful in the oil department as well, my dear. Really? There I go again, jumping the gun. Ruining a perfectly civil conversation on art by getting to the point. <laughs> hey, Margarita? <laughs> I must confess I'm more interested in the oil and paint than the oil and derricks. <laughs> ah, bravo, bravo. I understand you know Diego Rivera. Mm. Paris, wild times. I'm to see him today. Ah. Any tips? Swing left, stay sober. He was once a cannibal, you know. What? Yes. Never before has the link between government and industry been so obvious and so dangerous. Five dead. Two shot in the back. 27 injured by the blackjacks and fists of the strike breakers. And who were the attackers? Thugs? Pinkertons? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the murderers last night were government employees. Policemen killing and feeding the very citizens who pay their way. Lending their nightsticks and guns to the industrialists, to the strike breakers. I think it's time to stop What is your play about? What are your plays about? It's three penny opera. About what it. is your play about? It's about a prostitute, uh, poverty. <laughs> That's survival. That is not enough. What about the other prostitutes? And you don't have to be poor to be a whore. Look around you. In the mansions, in the churches, in the universities, everyone is corruptible, even your union leaders. The cradle of power is rocking! <laughs> Now who's the dummy? 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 Now who's ah! You want to use the back of your mouth. Try again. Now who's the dummy? Now who's the dummy? Now who's the dummy? Now who's the dummy? Now... Your mouth is moving. If your mouth is moving, the effect is ruined. Try to keep your lips immobile. Mmm, dummy. Federal Theater's touring show, Broadway Bandwagon, rolled into Peoria last night, and for two hours, gaiety and glamour obscured thoughts of drought and other financial worries. Peoria star. They performed Dubuque, Waterloo, Eau Claire, Sheboygan, Wausau, and Wisconsin Rapids, and I saw it in a high school in Manitowoc. 3,000 students seeing their first play with live actors. It was very exciting. I just got a letter from the director of the Portland, Oregon Project. Their debut was a resounding success. Sold out shows every night. Denver's a week away from opening Rick's Progress. That'll be Colorado's debut. It can't happen here? Oh, it is happening. It can't happen here. It's a steamroller. We have a commitment from the Detroit Project. Also, the Seattle Negro Company's in. And Brooklyn is doing a version in Yiddish. 21 productions of It Can't Happen Here in 17 states. Same play. All opening on the same day. Great. A national theater, Ellie. Birmingham, Boston, Chicago, Detroit, Newark, Bridgeport, Yonkers, Staten Island, Tampa, Worcester, Cleveland, Los Angeles, Minneapolis, Indianapolis, Tacoma, Denver, Miami, Omaha, Seattle, San Francisco, Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Kansas City. And we strip it, and we clip it, and we stack it, and we pack it, and we work, work, work all day. So did he stomp his feet? A couple of times. He sounds like such a child. Let's not talk about Orson. Let's talk about Antonio. Hmm? Antonio? You don't like it? No, I like it. Beautiful. Hmm? That's your mama. She made you. She's amazing. You're the artist. Thank you. I take pride in my work. Your mother. There's only one voice like it. 
I thought I'd find you in a room. Shh, this is a room. A bigger room, yes. I thought I'd find you without so many people. We couldn't afford oh, that. Oh, poor buddy. Oh, if you thought I had a better job, you could get a better room. Mama, don't start. Speak good things in front of my son, please. So many people. Someone could be sick. Say hello to Sophie. Hello, Sophie. Hello, Mama. Oh, look at that face. And today I saw Mr. Wells throw a tantrum in front of his new cast. They're mostly white. He was so passionate. I'm sure you were late, you know. Oh, have I missed much? Any of the paintings moved? <laughs> Most of the people have. Look, Da Vinci. Oh, da Vinci. Splendid. Oh. Hearst says that the Federal Theater is full of reds. Communists? Don't you mean? I can't imagine that to be true. Well, Hearst is a smart man. <laughs> yes, and I suppose I'm a dim woman. No, 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 I didn't say that. Could Mr. Hearst explain to me the communist implications of the Scottish play in the Caribbean? Ah, Margarita Serfati, my wife. He perpetually laid Countess Charmed. Lagrange? Likewise. Buonasera, je suis Carlo. Oh, thank you. Grazie. Your husband has an excellent eye for art. You are a lucky woman to have such a cultured man. Oh, blessed, Annie. Really. Hmm. Margarita, we must go. Ah, Countess. Grey? Mr. Oui. Fati, it has been a pleasure talking to you. And you can assure your trade representative that Mather Steel will put frames on Italian trucks as long as wheels turn. It will be deeply appreciated. Anything we can do to stop the spread of communism in Europe is in our own best interest. Thank you. Good day. Ciao. Oh, that was great. Goodbye. Mary. Mm. Did you just make a business deal? No, dear. But you said you'd put frames on Italian trucks. That is none of your business, dear. Mr. Darwin claims that it took 100,000 years for a man to make a monk... for monk... for man... monkey... For nature to make nature to make a monkey out of a man. That's nothing. A man can make a woman can make a monkey out of a man in an hour. That's true. Like your wife made a monkey out of you. <laughs> Melvin, people don't have to know that. <laughs> With the merchant marine, or was it a bricklayer? Yeah. All right. Those are my jokes that you're butchering. Uh, my act. I know you two probably don't believe in personal property, but this is not Russia. This is not rice or grain. It is my property. My act. You do not do another entertainer's act. It is not done. Understood? Okay, yes, sir. I saw in the paper that that Wells you work with is the uh, voice of the shadow. I like that show. Martha learns English from that show. The shadow knows. He's, uh, he's famous, right? <laughs> uh, he works a lot, uh, so he's got lots of money, right? Yeah. So, uh, why don't you do that? <laughs> I'd like to. So what's stopping you? Uh, you got to get the job. Well, apply for it, huh? Well, you wait on line for it. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. You're lazy. You got to get up early. Wait on the line. Early bird catches a worm. No, 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 no. You don't wait on line for a theater job, all right? Mama, give me, give me Antonio. You, you, you audition, you try out, you read, okay? Right, Antonio? You pretend to be the character, huh? You don't wait online. There you go. I gotta go pick the kids up at school. I've been since today. No, 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 no. I'm taking them to rehearsal. Sure. Mm hmm. All right. Goodbye, Antonio. Goodbye, bye. Bye, bye. I love you. Listen, here's a story Not much fun and not much glory Low class, low down The thing you never care to see Until there is a showdown One big question inside me cries How many fakers, peace undertakers how many toiling, ailing, dying, piled up bodies Brother, does it take to make you wise? It's very serious. Where's the irony? Where's the humor? What about the other prostitutes? Prostitute, you're a whore! You're a prostitute of the state! The police men are whores! You're a 
bought a house and lot of limousine, a swanky yard. My champagne would fill up any cellar. Oh, how they go the long clock. Gotta get up and go to work again. Acting awfully bored, I loaned a buck from Henry Ford. Broke a date with John D. Rockefeller. Mr. Romero. Hey. Mr. Diego Romero. Hey. I'm Nelson Rockefeller. I bring greetings from Margarita Safati. She says she knows you. Yes. Paris. Wild times. I saw her today. Yes. She's an exquisite woman with wonderful taste in art. Yeah. Would you like something to drink or something to eat? No. Frida. Senor Rockefeller. Madam. Please come in. So? 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 So, um... I've chosen your sketch from your composition to be included in the lobby of said Rockefeller Center. Now, as you may know, the theme for the piece is Man at the Crossroads, looking with hope and high vision to the choosing of a new and better future. And, uh... That's the theme of the piece, and we'd just be thrilled to death to have you, to have you do it. How much? Twenty-one thousand. All inclusive, materials and assistance. Would you like a drink? Yes. When can you start rehearsing? Tomorrow. <laughs> Rose, will you put these two beavers in motion? <laughs> All right, we're opening. We can't be late. Mr. Hoffman will be there. <laughs> Ask Harry for more money, Helen. Next. It's me. Mm -hmm. And your name? Uh, Olive Stanton. Mm -hmm. Your address? Oh, I don't have one. Are you currently employed? No, ma'am. You are applying for work at the Federal Theater Project. What experience do you have in the theater? Oh, um, I sing on Broadway. Well, I've sung on Broadway. Mm -hmm. Last employer? Excuse me. Last employer, last producer of a show you were in so we can contact him? Um, he's dead. His name? Oh, um, Mr. Smith. Uh, Minsky Smith. You've probably never heard of him. It was in Buffalo. We can check. Sorry. There wasn't any Smith. Um, I'm just a girl that needs a break is all. I've been working on the streets singing for Nichols and I need a job. I can sing real well and I'd work hard. Sister, this program is designed for theater professionals who are out of work. We have limited resources. We can't possibly employ all of the professionals. This isn't a Busby Berkeley fantasy, make you a star kid and all that. Are you strong? Ma'am. Are you strong? Can you lift things? Yes, ma'am. Project 891 needs a stagehand. Do you know what a stagehand does? Completely unglamorous work. Push a broom, lift scenery, pull ropes, that sort of thing. Are you interested? Yes, ma'am, you bet. All right, you are not eligible for casting in any place. Do you understand that? Okay, here's the address and report tomorrow between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. Oh, can I go today? Go bananas. Thank you. I'm sure if you're in a coal mine or a steel mill, a dangerous job, I can see the need for a break every hour or so. What are you saying? Nothing. I'm with you, Orson. This is theater. We're not risking our lives here. We're not pouring slag. Yeah. The other side of that is 20-hour days, low wages, no protection. It would help no if you didn't stop rehearsal or call for breaks. These are actors we're talking about, not garment workers. This is not the triangle fire. It's a play. No one is trying to oppress anyone here. We're just trying to get a show up. Once the show is up, well, we can work for what? Two. Two hours. Easy street. Two hours acting. Eight hours looking for another right. job. Frank? No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, should management insist that we work an eight-hour day once the show is up? Don't touch me. It's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, now, if you don't mind, I'd like you to get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> Bring in the puppets. 
We're in a jail cell, Steeltown, USA. Mom, our prostitute, has been arrested. She's sitting there, depressed and hungry, when the door opens. Who should walk in but the real horse, the creme de la creme of Steeltown, doctor specialist, editor of the newspaper, president of the university, Reverend Salvation. And an artist or two. Don't forget, they are the biggest horse. Right, right, right. And they're all in handcuffs. They've all been arrested by some dolt cop who made a mistake. Thought they were union organizers. Think what my people would think if they could see me. Phone to Mr. Mister to come and bail us out. Who is Mr. Mister? He's the big cheese. He pulls the strings in Steel Town. So, Mr. Mister, please take pity. Come and save your pet committee from disaster. I'm coming about the leaflet. Yes. I'm here for the meeting. Come here. Tommy Crickshaw, ventriloquist. Oh, did you bring your dummy? Uh, I prefer to think of him as a puppet. I, I never leave him. Well, we're just getting started, Mr. Crickshaw, if you'll have a seat. <clears throat> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Hazel Huffman, and I want to thank you all for coming here. It is my hope that tonight we can create a forum where people can talk freely without fear of recrimination. Don't worry. Powerful people are interested in what we have to say. I know for a fact there's a certain congressman who would like to know if problems exist in the federal theater. I, for one, am ready to talk. <laughs> Ah, they're scary. They're sins. Daddy, how come you're not doing a puppet? Well, Mr. Wells uh, doesn't want me to. What part do you play? The fourth scholar. It's a very important role. Literally! Well, hello, my darling. Hi, very welcome. You know Paul Edwards? Yes, hello. Paul. Hello, Helen. Sorry, I'm late. Bridge work in negotiations. Plus, Roosevelt is treating you well. Shoveling three agencies, the bureaucratic wonder, Harry Hopkins. Anything from cleaning children's teeth to controlling mosquitoes. Harry, what are these whispers I'm hearing about Congressman Dimes? Whispers, it's a roar. He announces tomorrow a committee to investigate communism in the WPA. Oh, dear. Why didn't you tell me? I'm telling you. Un-American activities, he calls it. I wouldn't worry. Dyes is a blowhard. This is just a bunch of politicians looking for headlines. What about this mixed-race dating? Has anyone else noticed this happening in theater groups? I have noticed that the people in the federal theater hopnop always with Negroes, throwing parties with them left and right. The problem that I have personally with the WPA and with the arts projects in particular is that they seem to be run by people that are very elitist, very snobby-like. I've noticed this too. Personally, I don't think there's any room to advance if you don't agree with them, if you're not the same as them, in politics, if you don't have politics-wise the same mind. And besides, reds aren't funny. I just don't think they're funny. Has the nerve to call me on the telephone and ask me for a date. That's right, the communist program. Social equality, money smart. That's right. Punch, Mr. Crickshaw? Yes, thank you very much, Miss Hoffman.
just been grilled. I also been barbecued and frizzled. Who's that? It's Larry Foreman, the union leader. I like this, Mark. Comes into the jail and sees all these rich people sitting there. Say, what's the whole Liberty Committee doing in the pokey? And on the wrong side of the bar. That's the one you want. He's a red, an agitator. Mr. Mister tries to bribe him, but he tells him to get lost. He won't sell out his union. His people are marching on the jail. Kill him. Lynch him. That's a storm that's gonna last until the final wind blows And when the wind blows, the cradle will rock Bravo. Yeah. Well, I think it is terrific, Jack. Thank you. Thank you. Mark, you have written something groundbreaking here. Never before, to my knowledge, has an American musical dealt with content and social issues and dramatic themes. You are reinventing musical theater. Wow, thank you. Orson. Yeah. Don't over-design this. Keep it pure and keep it simple. Well, you have my word, Madam Flanagan. I'll be checking in. Congratulations, Mark. Auditions are tonight at six. Auditions are tonight Score at six. Score will be left with the pianist if anybody wants to learn the song. To learn the songs. Augusta, you, you make a reservation at 21? Yes, we're Jack, students. Mark, come with me. Madam Flanagan, will you join us? At 21? Whew, yeah. it's too rich for my blood. I can see the headlines now. Civil servant dining at 21 on your tax dollars. Oh, perils of official and Orson. Yeah. Now, what role does a Negro actor play in this all-white production? Oh, white. Ridiculous. You'll play the Reverend Salvation. A white Protestant. In makeup, in a world of Amos and Anna, you can play a white you Protestant. Really makeup, my friend. Her. Subversion! Don't, please. Worry, <laughs> Mark. Don't you? Mark! Coming, coming. Mr. Mark. Yes? I'm Olive Stanton. And I know you. You're a stage actor. And I'm an actress. Um, I'd like to, with your permission, sir, if it'd be possible to audition. Audition? Mm, I don't know. Are you out of your mind? We're being investigated by Congress. We can't do this play, Halle. Why not? Greedy industrialist is brought down by the working man. It's pro-union, yes, but so is our audience. A stage full of marching workers trample the capitalists. They don't trample them. It's an attack on capitalism. Not at all. It's an attack on greed. It's a good play, it's funny, it's moving, and the music is great. It's not funny. I see glass. What? A stage of glass, yes. Don't ask me why, but whoa. There's something about standing on a surface of glass, the risk of it, the... Potential for injury. It'll be completely safe, of course. Thick, safe glass. 21 Club, please. Cradle will rock a spectacular glass. Yes, stage of glass, yeah. Are you communist, Mark? Uh, perhaps we should talk about the auditions, no. what we're Are looking for in each no. of the roles. Officially, no, Orson. I'm homosexual. That excludes oh. me from membership in the party. I am faithful to the ideals of the party. I am faithful to the party of ideas. No, you're faithful to the idea of a party. Sparkling wit, Jack. <laughs> I thought you were married, Mark. No, no. My wife passed huh? away uh, last year. Diego! Diego! Are you getting everything you need? I need burnt cypress embers. Oh, I'll send for some. You know, Diego, I think at first I was a bit unrealistic with my expectations. I am glad you're taking your time. Certainly, Michelangelo took his time with the Sistine Chapel. Only worked three months, not much. Three months? On and off? You know, I've, I've come to understand a great deal about art with this experience. Frida, portate bien, huh? Diego, what is that emanating from the man in the center. That's a recombination of atoms, the division of a cell. Those are germs, bacteria, cells, the wonders of the microscope. That's fascinating. Mm -hmm. It's so modern. And this large, uh, looks like a magnifying glass of some kind. People are, are, are staring at it. It's the latest invention, the television. Yes, I know television. Beamed visual radio. Imagine the potential for education. And these well-dressed people here. What is that? <laughs> what do you see? Oh, I get it. Picasso played this game with me, too. All right. I see... High society at a party of some kind. That's it! Huh? <laughs> the decadent rich above their heads, that's a syphilis cell. Syphilis cell? The rich in general? No, in specific. You're not talking about me, are you? But you don't have syphilis, do you? <laughs> no, of course not. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Up top there, is that a war of some kind? That's a battlefield. Men in the Holocaust of war. And beneath it, unemployed workers being beaten by the police. 
Do you like it? You can't stop the weather not with all your dough for when the wind blows and when the wind blows the cradle will rock. I gotta we run on my son's yeah, birthday. I need the less audition possible tonight. All right, thanks. Yes, yours all. Olive, isn't it? Yeah. I'm John Adair. I know. You're a great actor. I've been watching you. Thanks. Did you like the play? I liked it. I thought it was interesting. I felt it could have gone farther. Actually, I thought it was pretty silly. Where do you stand on Spain? Spain? Franco or the Loyalists? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> You just crawl out from under a rock? <laughs> That's a joke. I'm sorry, I was kidding. A lot of people don't know. Spain's being attacked by fascists from Italy and Nazis from Germany. Oh, to be young. Unbelievable. <laughs> At it again. Like bunnies. God bless them. Oh, what a bursting out there was, and what a blossoming. When we had all the summertime, and she had all the spring. And Roosevelt isn't doing a thing about it. Oh, OK. That's terrible. I don't know so much. I, I had no idea. I thought that we were talking about play. We were. I liked it. It made me think. Uh-oh. About unions and how important they are. Yeah. I guess I don't know so much about Spain, though. So I gather. Or politics. Well, what about dancing? How do you feel about the wonderful world of dancing? What, here in front of everyone? Why not? You want to audition, don't you? you can't be shy. I'm working. Union break! 15 minutes! You asking me to dance? Yes, ma'am. Then ask me. Miss Stanton, would you do me the honor? How the hell do you spell Honolulu? Who's gonna be a journalist? Am I supposed to be impressed? Ah, no. no. Temptations of Satan, Mark. <laughs> Calling me Satan, Jack? So, uh, what? You'll fill my belly with rich foods and fine wines, and in my sated state, I'll give myself over to Orson Welles and his stage of glass. I'm not, Is that it? I, no, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the follies of politics. I mean, we can discuss it over uh, Frankfurter, if you like. <laughs> also discuss the play. That is, after all, why we're here. What is the prevailing wisdom here? Sometime next month, the League of Nations is applying pressure. Yes. Suddenly, everybody cares about Ethiopia. Ha. Huh. Suddenly, Haile Selassie is an intelligent, rational leader. Doing business with you has been so important to Mussolini and embargo. It would be so harmful to our cause. Another example of rampant socialism run amok in this administration. Well, perhaps we could ship product now and stockpile in anticipation of the worst. Stockpile. Oh. Jack. Let's talk about prostitution and your connection with it. Well, do you have evidence? <laughs> Not of the loins, my boy, of the soul. Oh, oh boy. Boy. How is Cradle and Rock? Very good. It's funny. Tonight, ma'am. Tonight, ma'am. Why? It's pro union. How's the Inquisition going? I just don't understand. All these people testifying sound nuts, loony. I'll take notes. Are the reviews for the Revolt of the Beavers in? No. Let me know when they come. But she is a representative of the party, and they hope not indiscriminately with them. Sewing parties with them, right and left. Did you report it to Trudy Goodrich? Yes. She said she felt very sorry that I felt that they voted because she personally encouraged Negro attention on all occasions and went out with them or with any Negro who asked her to. They're getting it all wrong. Their emphasis is on morals, not politics. Don't they understand everybody lusts? They're not going to stop corruption in the program because people are fornicating in it. This is about communism, not immoral procreation. I agree with you, Hazel. I must get called for this committee. Oh, you would be fantastic. <sighs> Mr. Mitchell? Yes? Is it time for our tutorial? I can't come right now. Uh, the tutorial was canceled. Work together privately, and I will review. May we use the stage? Yes. 
Yeah. Okay. How long do you suppose you can whore your talents before you're no. used up and unwind? Whore my talents. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, who's the sponsor of the shadow? I think of it was my patrons. His uh, corporate nice. medici. Yes. They pay well, Mark, and with that money I pay for the theater, so. I buy props that the federal government won't approve. Right. Costumes, makeup, set pieces, uh, puppets. I feed my friends, get my actors yeah, drunk. You're such a god. Hey, there's nothing wrong with money, Mark. Everyone digs that beat. Everybody know. wants in. It's all the rage. I mean, even the boys in the crowd are starting to roll around in it. You, you think that Mr. Stalin is eating the same meal as a factory worker? I have no, no problem with we money. We call it the Ritz and you call I, it the I have no problem club. with money, Orson. I yeah, mean, like yeah, everybody yeah. else does. The question is, what will you do for the money? Where do you draw the line? Good question. <laughs> That's what my play is about. You know, Cradle Rock is about prostitution. Prostitution of education, prostitution of the press, mm. prostitution of the courts, mm. and most important... Yeah, uh, the Washington 29, no. Most important for you and me, mm. Orson, mm. prostitution of the artist. Where do you draw the line? Do you draw the line? How long before you're doing soap commercials? Well, this is going extremely well. Jack, mm. I do hope you don't mind me interrupting, but I was frightfully bored at my table, and I was thoroughly excluded. Mm. Not at all. Please, please join us. Orson, darling. Ah, we were just creating an insurmountable tension for our working relationship. <laughs> hey, birthday boy! Come over here. Hey, hey! You're late for your own son's birthday. Uh, I had to learn a song. I have an audition tonight. With Wells, huh? How's the old son Wells doing? Huh? Shot, oh no. <laughs> You're thinking you a big shot? Yes, Congressman dies. The Living Newspaper is the name of the project. They write nothing else but propaganda plays. They write the plays produced by the theater project? Yes, sir. And they produce them, too? They write them and they produce them. They are on the federal payroll? They are on the federal payroll, each one. I don't know about this. You don't know about this? You. Me? I don't want to be rude, but this is distracting. Distracting? Can you stop him? Stop me? Yes, you. What gives? Please, Mr. Crickshaw. No, Tony. I would rather just do it with you. Can we be alone? Oh, me? Yes. Just me? Yes. Uh... Yes. Yes. I can do the congressman. Yes. <clears throat> I beg your pardon, Miss Hoffman. Please continue. It looks like summer weather. There's a fine, warm sun. Truth is, I don't think of anything when I'm singing. I don't think about how hungry I am or how cold. I can even be singing about sad things and I feel all lifted up. You love to sing? Mm. Makes you warm, makes you forget. You have beautiful eyes. No. Mm. What were you crying before? When? When we danced. Was I that bad a dancer? No. No, it's nothing. You're holding on to secrets, Olive Stan. Mm. There's things that have happened to you. Bad things. I guess I'm just not used to kindness recently. You took me by surprise. We've all been hit by it, Olive. We've all been hungry. Nobody here is going to judge you. This is your family now. My official position is that I love it. Uh, yes, that it's that I'm thrilled. I think it's in my best interest to be publicly oh, excited yes, about yes. the piece. But I must admit, I have great trepidation about the mural. First of all, I'm not sure that it's great art. It will be great. It is not finished it's yet. It's not Picasso and it's not Matisse. They said no to you. They did not want to paint your lobby. Diego did. You are not going to get anywhere attacking the quality of the art. First of all, you are wrong. Second of all, you cannot win. There will always be an art critic somewhere to call you a bore, an unsympathetic, unfeeling capitalist, blockhead, incapable of appreciating true art, and I know 
That is not you now. Of course that's no. not me. There's not a greater appreciator of modern art and freedom of expression than yes, I. Yes, yes. Will you talk to him, see if you can get him to cheer it up just a little? Cheer it up. Margarita, there are microscopic cells of bubonic plague on the wall of my lobby. <gasps> oh. Orson, Orson, if you feel that way, why do you want to do Cradle Will Rise? Because it will piss off all the right people. And when you piss people off in the theater, you're doing something right. You see, because the theater should provoke. It shouldn't pander. People should leave the theater wanting to fight, to argue, to jump. First, oh, yeah. oh, good damn it, if people leave Cradle and head for a bistro for a Spanish coffee and a cigarette to discuss the intellectual underpinnings of a story, then we're dead men. Ah, to Mario. I want angry, lust filled theater goers. I think so. To the theater! Everyone leaves our theater. To the theater! There was another play called Processional. It dealt with a miner who had torn up the American flag and was put into jail. Later, he killed the soldier who had seen him in a church or a, a labor temple having sexual intercourse, if you please, with his mother. Oh. That was the type of play that was put on. I'm so nervous. You're doing great. Did that really happen? What? In the play, he had intercourse with his mother? Well, not on stage, but talked about it. Uh oh. Do you think I'll be called to testify? I have so much to say. If they don't call you, they're crazy. <gasps> okay, it's your turn. Thanks to Revolt of the Beavers, many children unschooled in the technique of revolution have an opportunity at government expense to improve their tender minds. Mother Goose is no longer a rhymed escapist. She has been studying Marx. Jack and Jill lead the class revolution. Saturday Evening Post. The gist is the federal theater is teaching poor people to hate and possibly murder rich children. This is ridiculous. Well, I'm stunned. It's so absurd, it's funny. The revolt of the beavers is a fairy tale. What about the guns, Allie? Oh, they don't shoot the big fat beaver, they just kick him out of beaver land. So what does that say? Class war. It's a fairy tale. The big fat beaver is a big fat capitalist. The big fat beaver is a bad big fat beaver. He is a greedy beaver. He's a bad beaver. <laughs> This song. Who taught him this song? I don't know. Who taught him this song? What song? His cousins. What's the problem? He's singing a black shirt song. In my house. He's singing his song of Italy. The proud to be singing this song. I'm proud. It's a fascist song. It's a beautiful song. Did you teach him this song? What if I did? Where do you live? Huh? Where do I live? What are you talking about? This is America, you dumb shit. You want to wave your arms around, huh? Go back to Italy, all right? You're in South Italy. You betray the land that gave your mother life. You spit on Italy. You slap your mother on the face. You spit on your mother? That's enough. I'm 36 years old. You can't smack me around anymore. <laughs> get out. What? Get out of my house. All right? Get out of my house. You respect your family. I respect my family. I just want him to leave. These are your family. Then you could go, too. I can go too. Yeah. Are you going to kick me out, the big boy? You can't afford to kick us out. Who do you think pays for this apartment? <laughs> then you want us to go? Then we'll go, all right? It costs too much to hear my son sing faster songs. Take the kids, we're going, let's go. We're going, crazy. let's go, we're going to go. Joey, Joey, Joey come, come on. on. You call yourself an artist. The Italians no. were bringing no. art and culture to this no. world while your Anglo-Saxon wife's relatives were still picking the fleas off each other, living in caves. I get the kids. Charles, no. John, let's go. So the fella comes to work one day, and there was a girl there who'd been a chambermaid in his hotel and had uh, talked communism to him on many occasions. 
And he says, what on earth are you doing here? She says, oh, I'm an actress. He says, go on, you're not an actress. I know you. You were a chambermaid in such and such a hotel. She tosses her head and says, yes, but it was a theatrical hotel. You're going to say that to the congressman? The point I'm making is that she was a maid. Now she's an actress <laughs> because of uh, her connections to the communists in charge. Mr. Crickshaw, your, your lurid stories about chambermaids. This is the U.S. Congress, not a, a beer hall. I am sorry, Hazel, to disappoint you. I, I assure you it is the furthest thing from my intention. Mr. Crickshaw, there is an evil that must be rooted out. We must choose our words carefully or the press will mock our accusations. I'm attracted to you. <gasps> Mr. Crickshaw, I view our relationship in purely professional terms. We are chums, nothing more. Diego. Oh, I knew someone by that name once. She was a Jew. And then she started going to bed with fascists, so I assume by now she changed her name. Fascist, just one. What? I had one fascist, and Mussolini and I are over. But you still work for him. Yes, and you. You are working for that cute little Rockefeller, huh? Touché, <laughs> madame. Ah, times, they change. So many roads we travel. I was wondering when you'd come. It is so big. I hope you are getting paid by the foot. <laughs> I wish. Oh, the cute little Rockefeller, he's hoping it could be more cheerful. <laughs> he sent you here to tell me this? He's worried. <laughs> Whose head has fallen? The head of fascism. Of Hitler. And your friend, the buffoon, Mussolini. My friend, the buffoon, loves your art, even though he hates your politics. And you know what he said to me? No, what did he say to you? That if you are ever in trouble and need help, Italy will be there for you. Oh, that's nice. But I think that the one that is going to need a place to hide is going to be Mussolini, not me. He and his pinche friend Hitler. Hitler You're is not the with friend very of Mussolini. Mussolini men. is a friend of many Jews. How beautiful. Fascist love. And you, you're not just in love. You're the publicity queen for the new Roman Empire, writing your articles for hers, selling this murderous philosophy, trying to put a human face on his fascism. You're at the mercy of a very powerful man. As are we all, Diego. As are we all. God's sake, it's the only thing that makes this singing bearable. Oh, have an open mind, dear. What the hell is he singing about, anyway? I don't know. I think it's something to do with the woes of a cobbler. Cobbler? Shoemaker. <laughs> it's ridiculous! I would appreciate it if you didn't cast your aspersion so loudly in front of my protégé. I didn't open my mouth at lunch today. I don't interfere with your affairs. You wouldn't Shh. understand them. I certainly would understand them. You're doing business with Benito Mussolini, who's a very dangerous man in my estimation. In your estimation? I'm looking beyond your profit margin to a moral place, dear. A terribly complex place we'll all have to deal with in the next few years. We have Jewish friends, you know.
couldn't understand the reality of people breaking in a song in the middle of a play, could you? Are you sure you want this man to direct your play, Mark? Not really, no. It's very nice. And who's next? John Adair. John Adair? I haven't gotten official permission. Just go out there. Don't say anything. Don't apologize. Just sing from your heart. Go on. That uh, song. That's not... John Adair, is She's it? one of mine, John. Hmm? One of mine. Augusta, no uh, stage hands. Oh, wait. Well, I, I like her. Let her sing. I'm checking home now. Go late at night. Going up to... This is the look of the prostitute. Fresh, innocent, vulnerable. I don't want some brassy, pocket cheapness whore, Jack. I want some gal who's doomed to sell her body because she's hungry. Market crash of 1929 made reluctant whores out of many young gals. You'd find that out if you were heterosexual, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Why did we cast her? She's terrible. Her glass sets are terrible. No one knows where they are. Actors enter in fear of their lives. Say another word, Jack. I'm going to murder you. Now, what the hell is going on? Hello, baby. Someone explain to me how it's possible that the nightclub queue is playing in the first scene. Hello, big hey, boy. Where the hell are you? Busy, baby. Hey. No problem, so I'd like to give you a hundred bucks, but I've only got thirty cents. So would you wait till I catch my breath? I'm so immense. Cuts in personnel? Well, twenty percent. That's three thousand people out of work. Effective immediately. Because of the cuts and reorganization, any new play, musical performance, or art gallery is prohibited from opening before July 1st. This is an outrage. Well, I know this. Our train leaves in 20 minutes. Well, we'll be down in Washington for two days. Can't this wait till I return? No, this has gone out to all projects oh, already. The train is the last one. I play by the book. Of course you do, Paul, but you should at least give me the chance to deal with the directors personally. Oh, Good please. Lord, Cradle will rock opens tomorrow. Oh, Cradle will rock opens tomorrow? Does that mean the opening is canceled? Well, I'm afraid it does. That if is just downright just crazy behavior. Rose Captain Jack House. I must insist that we leave. I have to talk to Jack. There isn't time. I'll call Mr. Hausman and explain everything. Let's go. Now, you better get going. Don't be late. Hallie, I'm sorry. I can conclude by saying I thank you for your patience and your kindness to me. We certainly hope that the results of this committee will be to clear out the communism on the federal project and the pro-communism and place the project in the hands of efficient, professional people. Place it in the hands of those who are in sympathy with the American home and government. Is that what you mean? Thanks. She loves you. I'm afraid I, I, I did not understand the question, Mr. Chairman. She loves you not. Well, I mean, she, she likes you not. You hope that she likes you not. Mr. Quickshaw, you're on. Isn't that what you mean? Loves you. No. That is exactly what I mean, Mr. Chairman. Well, uh, thank you for coming before this committee and giving us the facts that you have. Well, thank you for having this committee and receiving the facts that I have. <laughs> Open shop is when a worker can be kicked around, demoted, fired. Just like that, he's all alone. He's free. Free to be wiped out. Closed shop, he's got 50,000 other workers with him, ready to back him up, every one of them, to the last lunch pail. The difference? This is an open shop. This is a closed shop. This is a union! Order in the courtroom, order in the courtroom. Next case, Reverend Salvation. Where are they? The Liberty Committee, the Liberty Committee! Oh, Q, Augusta! Hey, what is the Q number? Hey! What? Where do we go from? 53! Q53, Mall's Line, Reverend Salvation, habitual prostitute since 1915. Reverend Salvation! Wait! Wait! When they say go, dear, 
I've never done this before. I am astonished. Ready, A. Ready. Go, Q. That's you. Me? Yes, you. Well, what do I do? Will you say the fucking line? Reverend Salvation, I bid you prostitutes in Spanish. Oh, Don't oh, start crying. You're Larry Foreman. I've been oh, looking all over town. Wrong scene, you. Frank. Wrong scene. <laughs> What's going on? There you are, Mr. Crickshaw. I pounded on your door. I didn't hear an answer. Am I going on next? No, sir. This is your slot. I sent Sid and Larry on to cover for you. That's nothing. A woman can make a monkey out of a man in an hour. That's my act. I'm sorry, sir. We had to do something. Or was it the lumberjack? No. Your brother. Really, Melvin, you're giving me a headache. A headache? Only people with brains have headaches. <laughs> Why can't you paint another face over it? Would you prefer Stalin? I don't. I was kicked out of the Communist Party for disagreeing with him. But if you want, I'll paint Stalin. You're not being very cooperative. I am too. I told you that I would paint Abraham Lincoln surrounded by freed slaves to counterbalance Lenin. And you rejected the idea. Why Lenin? He's a revolutionary leader, like your Washington and uh, Jefferson. Hey, there's an idea. Paint Jefferson. That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea at all. What do you say? What do you say? I said, ridiculous. I said Abraham Lincoln to balance Lenin, but Lenin stays. This is not a revolution, Diego. This is the United States. It's not Russia. Mm -hmm. And I am Diego Rivera, not Frederick Remington. You understand that it is entirely inappropriate to feature a communist leader in the lobby of a Rockefeller building. No. I believe nothing in art is inappropriate. I paint what I see. We're going to have to insist that the face be removed. Absolutely not! Look, you son of a bitch, we're trying to be nice! This is betrayal. Betrayal? Yes! There was no indication in your sketches you would be featuring communist leaders in the mural. You were hired on the basis of said sketches, and you've changed them. It's not fair! Lenin stays! How the hell do we open without a cue to cue? Access huh? is called early and we'll cue to cue in the morning. There's 175 cues to go. Perhaps if you cut some of the no. cues like Jack, a good a little boy. Hallie Flanagan's office. Not now, Augusta, I'm in the middle of an argument. No. Yes. You were singing I, I, flat. Why can't you admit? Stop you were like the quarter tone flat that he was on your last train. Like, All you have to do is listen to the trumpet. He didn't mean no. it. He's very tense. It's always this way, Darren. Just the union rules say we got a 12-hour break. I'll see you at noon. Come on, I'll just get a move on. Augusta, I'll be dressed by now. How the hell are we supposed to get there in the darkness? He's yelling at us about him. We can't even see him. He's yelling at us about him. Will you please? I'll tell them to light the match. Oh, hey, get to the knees, please. Thank you. Stop. 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 Really fucking necessary to have me eight fucking writing cues for a single fucking entry. It's an important entrance. I'm the fucking director. Yes, of Augusta. The disaster. Augusta, I have to take my kids to a free clinic in the morning. Tell Mr. Wells I'll be in at 11. I'm staying here till after you hear me. I hate you. And you can sleep alone tonight. Fine, I'll finally get some rest instead of letting you complain all night. I'm leaving. You can't leave. You're the producer. That's right. And as the producer, I can fire whomever I please. And I am fucking fired. He'll come crawling back like a bitch on heat to his master. I'm glad he didn't get to me. I can't remember my lines. I'm stricken with the cerebral malaise. No, God, cut it. God, just forget. Go home. Forget it. God. Well, first he cured all my deals with Italy. Now he's telling me how to run my business. I will not budge. Well, let him call. The crippled son of a bitch. Let him call. Jiminy Jesus, the bastard. You damn thing off of me. Who's the best gonna call? Oh, it's good. You look adorable. Oh, I don't want to look adorable. I want to look angry. You make a stunning hair. No, I need to let it out. Can you get it ready by tomorrow? We, oui, madame. <sighs> Mr. Augusta wants me to join with the rest of Little Steel in acknowledging the union. Oh, how terrible. Yes, it is terrible. It's worse than a strike. No, it's not worse than a strike. Well, I know so little. Gray, dear, that awful woman came by, left two packages. Woman? Packages? Oh, Carlo, can you grab the packages? Yes, mercy. Mr. Mathers, sir, two parcels were left for you from one Margarita Safati. Thank you, Paul. Out! What is in them? Oh, so nosy. Oh, pray tell. Oh, perhaps it's a surprise. Suppose it were a gift. 
What from Sarfati? Purchased what? through her. For you. Oh, how interesting. Yes. So, mind your business. Did you see the papers today? No. It was like Cradle of Rock was on the front page. They're having a strike. Who? Steel strike. Mather Steel. Really? I'm telling you. The same themes. Same words, almost. It's a dangerous play, Ian. It's a great role. I'm lucky, huh? Mm -hmm. I just don't want to blow it. It's too important. Daddy, are we going to lose our room? No chance. Why do you say that? Joey told me. Michael O'Brien's family lost their apartment. He doesn't go to school anymore. Daddy's got a job, so uh, we're going to be fine. Michael O'Brien's father had a job, and then he lost it, and then they were poor. Well, we're poor, but we're going to be fine. We should say some prayers just to be safe, though. All right? John. Yeah? Am I horrible? Huh? In the play. Am I horrible? No, you're not horrible. Am I not good? No, you're good. But I'm not great. No, you're great. The times... It's hard to be great. Some actors can be great all the time. It's your first role. You try hard. Listen, you're better off than you were. Your play is horrible, indulgent, masturbatory nonsense. You don't really believe that, do you? You hear what you want to hear. If you'd slept a little more, you might have had a shot. Garbage. It's not the end of the world. I saw a rat today. Where? And here. You know who stopped by? No. Your mama. She was pretty shocked about how we are living. She would be. I think she wants to help. No. Oh. Aldo. We could really use the money. I don't want my family's money. So the kids can go hungry just because of your pride, your politics. You want chubby little fascists. No, right? how can you say that? But I don't want to wait in soup lines with them. I don't now want what them would to that teach them if we take my parents' money? That it's all right to believe in something or have pride, but if you're just a little bit uncomfortable or hungry, sell it. Aldo, there are rats in here. Paul Edwards couldn't reach Jack Houseman last night. He's trying again today. I'll keep on top of that. We have to be assured, Jack, that we will find a way to do his show. They're chomping at the bit for you. 20% cuts, Harry. I had no warning. It's a temporary measure, a stopgap, a cash flow problem. We'll get the 20% back, Howie. Can I hold you to that? Yes. Who testified last night? Hazel Hoffman, a real nut case. Well, she got good headlines, though. Most of the press are so bored of this committee. They just bite the bait and print the highlights. They'll all be coming back for you, though, Howie. Not to put any pressure on you, but a good showing today would undoubtedly help. By order of the federal government, no one is allowed in the theater. No props, costumes, set pieces can be removed. Why? I don't know, sir. Well, for how long? I don't know, sir. We have an office in the back. I assume we can use that. I'll have to check with my commander. What's it? Go and check with Stalin, you Cossack yeah, stooge. Yeah. Well, I need to use yeah. the telephone. What's happening? We've been shut out. The feds have closed us down. Oh, how exciting. Listen, darling, I need your help. What are you doing right now? I have an opening at the Metropolitan and Mr. Mathers, you know, has labor troubles. Yes. Tonight there's a mass grave ball at the mm -hmm. Vanderhoos and I'm a very busy bunny. What do you need? I need you to join us in a clandestine operation. You game? Clandestine? How is it done? Go, James. Hey, hey, ¿Qué pasa? Esta la guerra. Adios. Miss Flanagan, you are the first woman in America to receive the Guggenheim Foundation Scholarship, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. And you went to study abroad for what, 12, 14 months to study the theater. I did. What date was that? That was in 1926 and 1927. You spent most of your time in what country? In Russia. In Russia. Now, how much time did you spend in Russia, Mrs. Flanagan? I spent two months and a half in Russia out of 14 months, but let me say, gentlemen, Did that you those spend two more time were... there studying the theater than you did in any other country? I did because there are many more theaters in Russia than there are in any other country. Did you or did you not make the statement that the theater in Russia is more vital and important? 
Yes, I did find that. What is it about the Russian theater that makes it more vital and important than the theaters of the continent and the theaters of the United States? I would be glad to answer that, but before I do, I would like to say that I have maintained consistently that federal theater is American theater. American theater founded on American principles, which has nothing to do with the Russian theater. I know, but you're not answering the question, Mr. Did you make later trips to Russia to study the theater? I went to Russia in 1931. Did you attend the Olympiad there? I did. Was this at the time of the Fifth Red Internationale of Labor Unions that, uh, that you attended? I wouldn't know about that. I was going to see theater. That was my one concern. Are you a member of any Russian organization at the present time? I am not. Have you been a member of any Russian organization? I have not. Open up. Go away. I'm never speaking to you again. You leave me alone. Open the window. Open it, open I'm it. Sorry, Mr. Hussman. Um, oh. oh, oh, for God's sake, put some clothes on, woman. Don't you realize we're under siege? Under siege? Well, what are you doing here, anyway? We had a fight. I escaped Oh, who goes there? there? It's, it's me, me Frank. Frank. Hallie Flanagan, please. Well, where in Washington? This is Jack Hausman. My theater has been seized by Cossacks. I need to speak with her immediately. There's an emergency. Oh, she's in Washington testifying. The radicals, Jack, locked out for content. Oh, very uh, exciting. We need a plan, we need a plan. I've got to think, got to think. We need a plan, uh, plan, plan, We'll plan. find a different theater. Yeah. Can't find a different theater. Find a different theater! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Augusta, uh, find me George Zorn. He's a booker, he'll know all the dark theaters. We'll smuggle the costumes out. Yes, yes, and the set. I hate the set. It's a nightmare, a brilliant idea, poorly executed. I've always said the play would work I better on a bare stage. Actually, Holly said that. No, I said it No, first. you didn't. Yes, I did. You did. Yes, I did. You yes, did. Yes, I did. Yes, oh, fine, fine, Jack. You win. You got the biggest creative dick, okay? Thank you. I have George Lord on the line. George! Yes, we have a theatrical emergency here. Can you come over to Maxine Elliott's theatre? Now? They criticized the revolt of the Beavers because they thought that it was poisoning the minds of youth. And for that reason, I would like to read into the record some of the reaction of the children who have seen this. The play teaches us no. never to be selfish. That it is better to be good than bad. That if you were unkind any time in your life, you will always regret it. I could read all of this. Thank you. Cuts. 20%. 3,000 people out of work. I sure hope they're all reds that lose their jobs. And if that points me to open time, I'm afraid I'm guilty. Next. Don't look, please. Are you an actor? Yes. Played all the role? Yes. Now listen carefully. Use the back entrance through the window of the women's dressing room. Good luck. Godspeed. Roosevelt wants me to give in. Follow the rest of Little Steel. He has no spine. He says if we don't capitulate, we'll have a revolution on our hands. Revolution. So what do you think, W.H.? You think Lewis has that kind of power? I think people are poor and angry and will follow anybody that promises them gold. They've got your cornered, Gray. If you give in, you'll lose money and you'll open the floodgates to socialists and radicals. If you resist, you wind up resisting with guns. <laughs> and that won't look good. Killing strikers doesn't play to the public. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to find a way to give them a dollar and take two. <laughs> Not an easy task. <laughs> Magnificent. Mm. Now listen, I'm buying art, that's all. If anything comes back to me, I'll bury you and your company. Not to worry. Diego Rivera. Yes. You must vacate the premises. Your work is now completed. Rockefeller Center no longer requires your services. Fuck off! Give me the Tribune. What's the critic's name there? Oh, never mind. No. This can't be the National Desk. No can do in the Jolson Theater. The owners in the Berkshires, unreachable. But what about the Gossamer Arts? Closed by the health department. And the Rialto? Well, <laughs> the owners of Liberty League are very conservative. Sandwich. I can try. Oh, wait. Do try, Johnny. I love irony. Yeah, this is Orson Welles, and I believe you may be interested to know that for the first time in American history, the government has sent armed guards to prevent the performance of a play. Frida! Moviliza the Art Students League. Diles lo que está pasando. Llama a los compañeros y diles que la guerra ha comenzado. 
Oh, newsflash, newsflash, 20% cuts in personnel. It's curtains for us, all of us. I hear a rumor they're gonna shut this whole project down. What do you think, Mr. Turncoat? Mr. Crickshaw, we worked up a little routine. Can you look at it? Give us your advice. You're reds. I don't talk to reds. We're not red, darling. Pink, like a flower. We're homosexuals, not communists. <laughs> You thought we were communists? Oh, that's rich. <laughs> Come on, watch our act. Leave me alone. <laughs> Mr. Rockefeller wanted to convey his feelings of appreciation for your work and instructed me to give you this check as payment in full. This is it? Now what? You paint over Lenin's face? You're gonna put her face on it? Or Hitler? Paint over the war? The Soviets? Turn them into jolly, drunken English fox hunters? A little bureaucratic bastard old thing of men on horses chasing after a little fox? Listen, folks, can I have your attention, please? Folks, due to cutbacks, we will not be hiring at the present time. <laughs> to save you time and aggravation, we suggest you drop off your applications and go home or to the park. We're very sorry. Mrs. Flanagan, how many people do you figure you had as audience in the United States for these plays? And the recorded figure, Congressman, dies with something like 25 million people. In other words, you have reached approximately 25% of our population with your play. Something like that, yes. Now, you wrote for Theater Arts Monthly, November 1931, did you not? Yes, I did. I quote this from that same article, start dramatic groups and unions, in fraternal organizations, in social clubs, in company unions, in YMCAs. Dot the land from coast to coast. Don't expect profit in money. These theaters exist to awaken the May workers. May I interrupt just one minute? Please notice that that is a quotation. A quotation, yes. But these are your words I'm quoting. The workers' theaters intend to remake a social structure without the help of money. And this ambition alone invests their undertaking with a certain Marlowe-esque madness. You are quoting from this Marlowe. Is he a communist? I'm very sorry. I was quoting from Christopher Marlowe. Tell us who this Marlowe is so we can get the proper reference, because that is all we want to do. Put in the record that he was the greatest dramatist in the period of Shakespeare, immediately preceding Shakespeare. Of course, we had what some people call communists back in the days of the Greek theater. If you say so. And I believe Mr. Euripides was guilty of teaching class consciousness also, wasn't he? I believe it was alleged against all the Greek dramatists. So we cannot say when it began. Wasn't it alleged also of Ibsen and against practically every great playwright? I think so. Countess, we need a piano. Piano? In case the theater we find doesn't have one. Good thing. Here's $10, that should cover the rental. Mark, tell the Countess where she might find a piano. Um, Mr. Wells, we most Mr. Wells. will be performing The Cradle Will Rock tonight. Where? What theater? We're currently negotiating with three theaters. We'll let you know within the hour. Why can't we go in? This is private property. It's not open to the public. We want to see the painting. The lobby is closed. No, it's fresco. It's muy formidable. The paint will come through. Must hit. Chip, chip. No, son. No, son. Hi. Your masquerade party starts in an hour. You wanted me to Claire. remind you. Not now. Chip. Salt, do we have a pneumatic drill? You're Larry Foreman. Ex Foreman. I've been looking all over town for you. Uh, how's the union returns, Mr. Mister? Oh, damn, what is it? They haven't come we to a decision. Can do this. Has anyone asked the WPA if this Hallie is okay? Hallie is in Washington testifying. We'll bring the guitar out front. I'm not going to do it. Hell's the jack. We've got trouble with the musicians and the actors' unions. They won't sanction a performance elsewhere. What? The actors' union and the musicians' union are forbidding their members to perform. Mather Steele will not be intimidated. James! Just a second. Where the hell is my wife? I last seen her at Maxine Elliott's theater downtown. You left her there? She dismissed me, sir. Bring the car around. Yes, sir. Are we clear? That's right. Whatever it takes. Madam, so far to the theater. Show her in. Carlo, a little privacy, mm -hmm. please. Why don't you go clean the toilets or something? I clean nothing. Hey, such a Madam, pleasure. Uh, one is such a pleasure. One I mean, to Carlo. see you. I mean, it is a great <laughs> yeah, pleasure to... Oh. Carlo, out! Your way, sir. Out! Everybody out! Out! <laughs> out. Oh. <laughs>
Oh, great, great. Did you receive the package? Yes, I did. You did not open it? Uh, no, I haven't. Well... Yes. And Mr. Harris, did he receive his package? Yes, yes, he did. Did it please him? Oh, yes, very much. So when do you sail? Tonight. Your payment, madame? Thank you, thank you. And Mussolini thanks you. We, I, I, we are going to miss you. You did not tell me what you feel. About you? About the painting. You open it, but you say nothing. Oh, I, I love it. It's a, it's a masterpiece. Yes. Is it Da Vinci? Yes. And where will you hang her? Uh, here in the study, uh, over the fireplace. Hmm. Ah. Hmm? Oh, what a shame to let the classics sleep away. Well, he won't even reconsider, right? Talk about well, fascist. What is it? What's going on? Actors at the final nail. No, 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 we can't do the show. We, we can't, can't do the show. show. Neither can the musician. I hate you, Jack. How are we going to do the show without musicians? Shows on. What for what? It's a major. It's We're not making it yet. You are in the United States. You won't let us do the show. What I say stop. You say go. You're an evil man. This is censorship. Shut up. Excuse me, Jack. It means we can't do the show. It means it's over. It's over, everybody. What's the reason? Time to go Excuse home. Excuse me? Let's go. Oh, the What's show's the a disaster. Excuse me? Not now, George. Since you've been paid what by the federal government anyway? for her, so you can't be kicked out of the union, not be able to That's work, ridiculous. I can't risk that. Well, we thought so, too. It's... Excuse me? What? I found a theater. The Venice, 59th and 7th. The owner wants 100 bucks. Well, tell him no. What? It's over, Dad, George. Dad, I found a piano. Where am I going? We're not doing the show. We've been censured. Well, I found a piano. There's a crowd out there. Why not do it in the street? We have a theater. It's the actors. They've been forbidden. Well, why not let Mark do it? By himself. All the characters, what? yeah. Oh, he did it for us. I know, but it's not going to be any good, is it? What's not going to be any good? What? Besides, he's in the union. Mark? Are you in the musicians' union? No, why? You have established the precedent of exhibiting a play that champions the cause of public ownership of utilities. You said that you thought that was proper, and you thought that you had a right to do that. I think so. And now, if the same play proved that the public ownership of railroads was a good thing, well, you would do it, too, would you not? Absolutely. And the test is, is it a good play? And if someone came with a play showing that the public ownership of all the lands in the United States, and it was a good play, well, you would do that, too, would well, you not? Well, that is a very clever move on your part to maneuver me into a certain position. I do not pretend to any cleverness. No, I would not. We would stop at that because that would be recommending the overthrow of the United States government. And I do not want that gentleman, whatever some of the previous witnesses have intimated. In other words, you would favor doing it by degrees, but not all at once. Isn't that right? Well, it is a degree that Congress of the United States after. Uh, yeah. You did it one time. Not that I know. During the war? Oh, going back now. I want you all to know that I resent the silent treatment, the subtle torture that you are all subjecting me to. It is not easy being the one that stands up and says the truth. You all know that there are communists amongst you. You all know that you date Negroes. You all know that you are anti-fascist. I say the pox on you and your house. I will not tolerate this abuse. What a hero you are. Mr. Noble, rat on his friends, now everybody gets fired. Crickshaw, what a hypocrite. You believed in something once, Tommy. Shut up. Where have you come, Tommy Crickshaw? Where's the young Conrad I once knew? Let's do the old act. One more time, for old time's sake. Come on, Tommy. Federal government and the Actors and Musicians Union have Selfie! collectively forbidden us Selfie! from performing this play. However, I'm happy show. to announce that Mark Wittstein, the composer of Cradle Will Rock, 
not being a member of the union, will be performing the play by himself on the stage of the Venice Theatre, 21 blocks north on 59th and 7th. Of course, you're all invited to join us. Thank you. Where is it? 59th and 7th. You gonna go? No, I don't think so. Every major newspaper critic in New York is here, Mark. Can't let them down. Hey, you better be good. This is huge. 59,000 people. The Rome Theatre, 57th and 9th. We should support Mark. He'll be terrified playing on his own. Our union has forbidden us from performing in this show. If we even go to that theater, we could lose our jobs. Now, I'm leaving. You can either come with me or find somewhere else to sleep. You're kicking me out? Come now or find somewhere else to sleep, understand? Mrs. Flanagan, we have had a long day, and your testimony has been most illuminating. We will hear from Mr. Osberg tomorrow. We will adjourn for the evening. Just a minute, gentlemen. Do I understand this concludes my testimony? We will see about it tomorrow. I would like to make a final statement if I may, Congressman Dyes. Mrs. Flanagan, it is very late. We shall see about it tomorrow. Chairman Dyes, this committee has heard testimony for five and a half months from unqualified witnesses. As head of the federal theater, I must insist on more time to refute this testimony. It is only fair and decent, sir. Oh, now, let's not talk about decency, Mrs. Flanagan. The Federal Theater is hardly a judge of that. Now, excuse me, ma'am. Miss Flanagan, any comment on the proceedings? They're chasing ghosts. I hope to further repudiate their charges tomorrow. What is going on here, Harry? Harry Starnes look like a fool, and he's furious. I mean, model of communist? <laughs> they have to allow me to continue. Oh, they're not asking you back here. I have had to six hours. You're it's not fair. Six hours. Hazel Huffman had three days. She's a clerk. I'm head of the project. You brought intelligence I must and be allowed to continue. These proceedings in the committee is not interested in reason and intelligence. You have to talk this is, to Roosevelt. This is a show. This is their show, and they are writing you out Did of it. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? Roosevelt can make it happen. One press no. release, and I'll be back here in the morning. This is not going to happen. Excuse me. What do you say? I am saying this is not going to happen. Roosevelt is saving his fights. This is politics, Hallie. Give a little. Get a little. Exquisite, exquisite. Congratulations. It is a perfect fit. You know, the next time we see each other, we'll probably be at war. I hope not. I hope it can be avoided. Probably not. Probably not. What were you expecting? I was dragged out of the you building like a common to criminal. Do a job. And now your boss does not like what you did. If you want to paint your revolution, do it at your own expense. Go paint a mural for nothing at the Young Communist League. Because I take Rockefeller's money, now I am his slave? Yes. When did you stop supporting art? I support your art, but that does not mean that I must support your revolution. It's the same thing. No, it is not. Oh, what a lie you live. A Jewish fascist. And you, a wealthy communist. But no. La batalla commence. Probably, I shouldn't do a character description, right? Don't do it, Harry. Shut up, Jack. Shut up. Shut up. Please, please, please. please. Um, okay, seven duets to this. I'm do that. Strange, doesn't it? Can you not do it in the play? Because the government says we can't. 
But you want to do it? Yes. Is it against the law? No, but they're my boss and they pay me and they say we can't do the show. But you still want to do it. So why don't you do it already? Because I can't. It's been forbidden. And I can lose my job. Career. The only person who can ruin your career is you. Oh, shut up. You shut up. I never want to work with you again, ever. I'm never going to work with you again. I never want to work with you again, ever. That's it. Constance, what on earth are you doing? I'm getting the piano off the truck! Oh, my heavens, darling! I was supposed to meet you at home an hour ago. I failed you miserably. I do hope you'll forgive me. You look splendid, great darling. Have you got any money? I'd like to give these generous men a gratuity. Get in the car. Why, dear? We're going home. Oh, darling, we missed the performance. That is certainly oh, please my intention. Please don't make me choose between Marie Antoinette and this evening. I'll never forgive you if you make me miss this performance tonight. Huh? Oh, good Lord, it's a revolution. Get the audience. <clears throat> Carlo, would you please give me and my husband some privacy? Yes, miss. James, go! James, stay. Oh. When did you become such a stick in the mud? Oh, stop it. We're going home. My wife has gone completely mad. Get in the car, now. Perhaps you've mistaken me for a Spaniel. If you don't get in the car, I will cut off your allowance. <gasps> do, do nothing of the kind. And if you do, then I'll have to live as a gypsy does. <laughs> Constance! You know times are hard when I look at you and see firewood. Hey, what are you saying? Why, my oaken friend, Mr. Roosevelt, has laid us off. Cut that? Politics. I told you, you shouldn't have ratted on my friends. Friends? Uh-oh. Did you say friends? Those reds are your friends? Sorry, comrade. Comrade? We are all comrades, and we will not rest until all the country is red. I've known this dummy like the back of my hand, I swear. In my own hand, a revolutionary. Ladies and gentlemen, this man exploits my labor for his own profits. This capitalist pays me zero, works me whenever he likes. I sleep in a coffin-like apartment. You're a dummy. Dummies! This is what he calls us, brothers and sisters. Not you, folks. If it is dummies we are, then I say, dummies, <laughs> rise up. Rise up to the proletarian call of dummies everywhere. Storm the barricades. Riot in the streets. Give them the Arise, ye prisoners of starvation. Arise, ye wretched of the earth. For justice thunders condemnation of that our world in birth. Then comrades come rally, and the last sight let us chase. The international unites the human race. And Aristophanes was definitely a communist. <laughs> so are we through? Is this it? Should I be looking for a job? We've got another year if we fight. <laughs> you know, I can understand the Puritans, oh. I can understand the politics, but I guess I don't understand the passion of it, <laughs> the intense anger. It's not just anger, it's fear. Fear? Mr. O'Hara, have you ever heard of Michael Grunwald? Well, was he a communist? <laughs> no. <laughs> Mr. DeRohan? Uh, Michael Grunwald, an historian, Elizabethan England, not a communist, as far as I can tell. Mr. O'Hara, have you read any of his books? Uh, uh, no, Congressman Flanagan, I skipped that course. <laughs> but you know your history of Elizabethan England. Well, yes, from Shakespeare, Madam mm -hmm. Chairman. A playwright, I see. Mr. O'Hara, who was Richard III? A humpback and a killer. Mm. Mr. DeRohan, what is Michael Grunwald's opinion of Richard III? Uh, Michael Grunwald would say that Richard III was a great ruler and much maligned. 
And yet the Shakespeare has written a play which is still performed while Mr. Grunwald's books gather dust. Would you consider that unfair, Mr. Rohan? Why, yes. I would say that this Mr. Shakespeare should be investigated. And if all else fails, we can remove his words. Burn them. We're not painting pretty pictures with our plays. It must scare the hell out of them. Well, the plays are written. They're here forever. Oh, I hope they are. Federal theater is going to end. But theater's going to be better off. We've launched a ship. A grand and glorious ship. How come you did that, Dad? You should ask your uncle, that's his flag. Olive! I, I thought you went home. Uh, I don't have a home now. He kicked you out? Can we sleep on your floor tonight? Sure. I didn't want to miss this. What in God's name were you expecting from a communist? I wouldn't have had this problem with Picasso and Matisse. We control the future of art because we pay for the future of art. Appoint people to your museum boards that detest the Riveras of this world. Celebrate the Matisses. Create the next wave of art. You have the purse strings. It's quite obvious. You have the power. Cultural power. Yes. To pay for the Matisse. Celebrate colors. Celebrate form. Portraits. Country signs. Men on horses. Sunsets. Nudes. Welcome to the first runaway production of the Federal Theater. I'm sure that you are aware by now of the circumstances that have led us to this dusty theater on this beautiful summer night. Something in this play frightens people in Washington. There must be some sinister force at work in this play. <laughs> so, without further ado, allow me to introduce to you the monster behind the cradle will rock, Mr. Mark Blitzstein. Good evening. Fade to black and we're in Steeltown, USA. A prostitute walks down the street and stops under a street lamp. This is Moll. Play. She sings. I'm checking home now. Call it a night. Gone up to my... Turn on the light, Jesus, turn, turn off on that light. light. I ain't in steel town hall. I work two days a week. The other five my efforts ain't required. For two days I Enter a well-dressed gentleman who's on the make. Okay, enter me. I'd like to give you a hundred bucks, but I only got 30 cents. 
Nelson will fund a new wave of art, a traveling exhibit throughout Europe highlighting American artists. Non-political. Yes, abstract, colors and form, not politics. My papers will hail it as the next new thing. We'll canonize the artists, make them rich. <laughs> and soon enough, all artists will be doing the next new thing. You think? There's something about artists that always gets socially concerned. That's true. Well, they won't get paid for it. They won't be seen. They'll have no influence. And rather than starve, they'll adapt. It's survival. And uh, artists are whores, <laughs> like the rest of us. <laughs> what it is makes people Scene two, we're now in a holding cell. Moll sits there depressed as Larry Foreman, a union leader, is thrown in there with her. He says, You're new here. What's the matter? They catch you on the streets? Uh-huh. What did they get you for? Who, me? Making a speech and passing out leaflets. The formal charge is inciting a riot. Ain't you ever seen my act? Well, I'm creeping along in the dark. My eyes is crafty. My pockets is bulging. I'm loaded on to the teeth with leaflets. <laughs> I come up to you very slow, very sneaky, and with one fell gesture, I tuck a leaflet in your hand. <laughs> one, two, three. Oh! There's a riot. <laughs> You're the riot. I incited you. I'm terrific, I am. Scene three, a night court. Enter the Liberty Committee. Say, what's the whole Liberty Committee doing in a night court and on the other side of the bar? Think of what my people would think if they could see me. You know Mr. Mister, he'll come and bail us out. Phone for Mr. Mister to, to come and bail us out. We're the most respectable families in the city. We're, We're still Town's, Town's Liberty, Liberty Committee. Committee. We're against the union. We're against the bribe. Why, I drew up the manifesto. Still Town is clean. Steel Town's a real town. We don't want a union in Steel Town. <laughs> I am the Reverend Salvation. We have formed the Liberty Committee to combat against socialism, communism, radicalism, and especially unionism. I'm the editor of the Steel Town News. I'm his personal doctor. And I'm Mr. Mister's personal wife. Mr. Mister's Mrs. Mrs. <laughs> I'm his daughter, Sister Mister. And I'm his son, Junior Mister. Who is this Mr. Mister? Better ask who he's not. He owns steel and everything else. So, Mr. Mister, please take pity. Come and save your pet committee from disaster. You've got this wrong. Name? Reverend.
Reverend Salvation. Habitual prostitute since 1915. So say it in the Bible. So must it be. Thou shalt not kill. Peace on earth toward men good will. Only good will. As your shepherd I am. Turn from thoughts of wicked war, war we do abhor. Let's do something before we've, we've got, got too old. old. I'm glad I'm, I'm not too old to tie a can to a doggy's tail. tail. Let's, Let's raise chickens, raise the tickets, go to church and be on time. For excitement and indictment would be swell if we had a crime. Let's do something to kill the monotony. Let's go and for botany, they got me in it. Please don't be quite so downright Simply answer both yes and no It's true, you preached so much for peace But now it seems that peace May be a little expensive Please don't think me offensive Just restrain your intensive order Oh, the press, the press The freedom of the press They'll never take away the freedom of the press That fallen series now Yes, Mr. Mr. Yes! yes. With a hey diddle be and a whole nutty no. No. no! Yes, Mr. Mr. Yes! Oh, but genocide will pay the best. Oh, you clergymen must now prepare a special prayer and do your share. Oh, yes, your share. Thou shalt. War, war, kill all the dirty huns and those our barbarians. War, war, we're entering the war. Make the world safe for democracy, make the world safe for liberty, make the world safe for steel and the Mr. Family. Of course it's peace we're for, this is war to end the war. Amen. I can see the market rising like a beautiful bird. Collection. You're Larry Foreman. Ex Foreman. I've been. I've been. Looking. I've been looking all over town for you. Yeah, well, how's the union returns? Well, they haven't. haven't come back with a decision yet. Mr. Foreman, I know a lot about you. Yeah? You were once in my employ. Now look, we both want the same thing, a fair square deal for everybody. Now why don't you persuade your union to join with the Liberty Committee in one great big united organization? Let me understand you. You like my services in swinging your way, all the people I've signed up, all the people who agree with the union. You want me to change their mind? Is that it? That's it. Now do it. Well, that's rather strongly put. It ought to be worth quite a sum to you, eh? I thought so. Every man has his price. And every day is a wonderland tour. Oh, you can dream and scheme and have me put and take, take and put. But first Sweet, then you'll go right. Wait, I'm kind of funny that way. I'd like to know now about how much it might be worth. Who do you think you are? Go on! Go on! That's just a vista! Making you an offer, take it, take it, making you an offer, vista, vista! You don't say. Worth that much to you, eh? Will you take all that money and you go buy yourself a big piece of toast? Oh. Oh, 
Now then, get out of here! And take this little girl with you! Out there, she doesn't cost you nothing. In jail, you're liable to have to feed her. You goddamn skunk. I'll break you. I'll drive you out of town. Yes, Lynch. Kill. Listen once and for all, you scared bunch of ninnies. Outside in the square, they're starting something that's going to tear the cat gut out of your stinking rackets. That's steel marching out in front. The people in this town are finding out what it's all about. They're growing up. And when everybody gets together like Steel's getting together tonight, where are you then? Listen, you black legions, you Ku Kluxes, you vigilantes hiding up there in the cradle of the Liberty Committee. When the storm breaks, the cradle will fall! Listen! The Boilermakers are with us. That's the Boilermakers' kids. The Roughers. The Rollers. Steel! Your steel! They done it! Hey, they're marching down here. They ain't got no permit to march. Arrest them. Arrest them? There's thousands of them. They're standing in front of the courthouse. They're right here. Oh my God, what do they want with me? Don't worry, that's not for you. That's just a union marching. And then they put out their hands in real stormy weather. Bernie ups and cries, boys, this looks bad. You haven't used your eyes, you'll wish you had. That's fine, that's fine, and it's going to song from you. No wonder those storms seem to circle all around.
they shouldn't give a hoot when they can substitute. Find me a dream man and leave us in dreamland where me and my dream man can. When they can substitute.